Welcome to the Herbal Hour. I'm your host, Stephen Horn, and today we're going to talk about the spark plugs of life, enzymes. Now, I want you to think for a minute, you know, I'm sure that you have an automobile, or at least most of you do, and you put fuel in that tank to make that automobile go, but that fuel isn't going to get you anywhere unless there's something to ignite it so that it converts the fuel into energy to run the automobile. And of course, in the automobile, that's your spark plug because that gives a little arc or electrical spark that mixes the fuel and oxygen and makes it burn. Well, in your body, what sparks the process of life so that you can burn the fuel that you're eating, i.e. the food, and combust it with the air and create energy, and what also runs every other process in living tissue is specialized molecules called enzymes. Without enzymes, we just wouldn't function properly. Well, what are enzymes? Enzymes are actually protein molecules, and they're created only by living organisms. And they're created from the DNA blueprints inside the genetic material inside your cells. So in other words, they, the, one of the functions of DNA is to create enzymes. Enzymes catalyze specific chemical reactions so that they make these chemical reactions occur um, at low temperatures um, and very quickly and rapidly. And they're found in all living things. In fact, they're one of the things that make living things living because they're part of the, the process of, um, like I say, catalyzing life energy in living things. Now, here are a few of the facts about these little things called enzymes. They were discovered in the 1930s, and since their discovery, they've identified more than 5,000 enzymes in living tissues. Our own bodies have over 3,000 different enzymes, and all of those enzymes require vitamins and minerals in order to make them work. In other words, vitamins and minerals are cofactors for activating enzyme systems in the body. All enzymes also work within a specific pH range. So if you put the enzyme out of a specific pH range, it won't function. That's part of the biological terrain idea of disease, that if you keep the pH of the body balanced, then things work properly. If it's not balanced, they don't. And also, the names of enzymes end in ASE, ACE. So in other words, you can identify most enzymes because they will end with that little um, ending as a, as a very simple chemical um, name. Now in our bodies, there are three different classes or kinds of enzymes. Um, first, there's metabolic enzymes, then there's also digestive enzymes, and also there's enzymes that we take into our bodies from food, and these are called food enzymes. And we're going to talk just briefly about, well, not about some of these a little more detail, but we're going to talk, we're going to talk a little bit about each one of these different kinds of enzymes. And first, let's talk about metabolic enzymes. Metabolic enzymes are what synthesize all the hormones, all the neurotransmitters, and everything else your body needs to function properly. So these are like the manufacturing plants for all of your body's chemical structures. They're also found in the mitochondria of the cell to make the energy process work inside the cell. Um, they break down the above things after use. In other words, they also, when the hormones are, need to be broken down, when the neurotransmitters need to be broken down, when chemicals are no longer used, enzymes deconstruct those things too. So they also are detoxifying or breaking down things in the body. Um, they do also detoxify the system when chemical poisons or other irritants get into the body. It's up to the enzymes to neutralize those toxins and convert them into substances that the body can eliminate. Also, metabolic enzymes promote tissue healing. So in other words, it requires enzymes for anything in your body to heal. So you can see that if we... Um, didn't have these enzymes, nothing is going to work properly. 
Uh, now, metabolic enzymes, for the most part, can't be ingested. The body manufactures them by reading off the DNA blueprint in order to put that enzyme to construct it, and then it needs vitamin and mineral cofactors to work. So part of what we're doing in nutrition is we're getting the amino acids needed to construct enzymes, and we're also getting the vitamin and mineral cofactors needed to make the enzymes work. One particular type of metabolic enzyme that, for example, I'll talk about briefly, is some of your liver enzymes. Um, your liver does, has enzyme systems for detoxifying chemical components. We've talked about this in some other videos, but when you have metabolic waste products, you have microbial waste products, drugs and chemicals, or fat-soluble toxins that get into the system, there are two groups of liver enzymes that that create phase one and phase two detoxification to break these toxins down, or not break them down, but to um, make them so that they can be eliminated from the system. Phase one detoxification enzymes add or subtract an electron. Phase two attach that um, electrically charged compound to another compound that's water soluble so that it can be excreted in the bile or the urine. And so that's just one example of metabolic enzymes. Another example of metabolic enzymes, perhaps you've heard of um, MAO inhibitors. Um, before they had selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, SSRIs, for treating de de depression in the uh, pharmaceutical world, they used MAOs. MAO is a monoamine oxidase inhibitor, and that's the enzyme that breaks down serotonin and other um, uh, neurotransmitters in the brain. So an MAO inhibitor inhibited the function of that enzyme that broke down serotonin. Therefore, it made the serotonin last longer in the brain. Now, now they use drugs that inhibit what's called serotonin reuptake. Now, I'm not advocating the use of drugs. I'm just saying that a lot of what happens with drugs is that they actually interfere with either uh, by enhancing or blocking the action of various enzymes in the body. Um, because enzymes, like I say, are these things that run all of the different metabolic processes within our system. Now, one of the forms of enzymes that's really important to our health is digestive enzymes. Because digestive enzymes are produced by the digestive organs in order to break down the food we eat. They're produced in the salivary glands, the stomach, the pancreas, and the small intestines. And these are the enzymes that make the food we eat available to our tissues in a form that the tissues can, can use. So if we don't have functioning digestive enzymes, it doesn't matter what we eat, we're not going to get the food value out of what we're eating. Now many natural healers have a saying that they get from Dr. Bernard Jensen, which is, death begins in the colon. But that's not exactly true, because problems in the colon actually start upstream. So uh, they, it's, it's problems in the stomach, um, pancreas, and liver with digestive enzyme problems that ultimately make the um, colon malfunction. So if you're really going to talk about where to start with rebuilding your health, the first place to start is to make sure your digestion is working properly and your digestive enzymes are properly breaking down your food. So let's look a little bit at this digestive process. First of all, digestion begins in the mouth. So the saliva not only moistens the food, it contains an amylase, that's a carbohydrate or digesting enzyme, that starts breaking down starches. And this enzyme functions in a pH range of 6.0 to 7.0. So if you take the pH of your saliva, and the pH of your saliva is below 6 or above 7, then starch digestion will not be initiated when you're chewing your food. Um, and this can cause a lot of stress on your pancreas and a lot of blood sugar problems. It's one of the reasons why maintaining pH is important to health. Also. When you're eating carbohydrates, 
any kind of bread, uh, potatoes, any kind of starchy food. It's very, very important that you chew that food thoroughly so that it mixes with the saliva so you get those carbohydrate digesting enzymes going to work on the starches right away because a lot of the starch digestion is going to take place um, right uh, uh, in the early stages of, of that um, chewing the food and so forth, and that is going to save your pancreatic enzymes and it's going to make you get more food value out of those particular carbohydrates that you're eating. Now, when the stuff drops into the stomach, which is the next stage of digestion, hydrochloric acid and pepsin are secreted by the stomach to start breaking down proteins. Hydrochloric acid is also important for mineral absorption because it's hydrochloric acid that makes things like calcium and zinc and magnesium assimilatable by the body. There's also another enzyme called renin which digests milk proteins in the stomach. Now when you first eat, um, the stomach doesn't pour out hydrochloric acid and pepsin on the food right away. It actually lets it sit in the stomach for a little bit and then it starts secreting the, the digestive acids and so forth. This allows time for the alkaline-based um, starch digesting enzymes to do some of their work before the protein digesting enzymes um, uh, pepsin begins to work on the proteins. Um, this is also important to know because when you eat food that actually contains enzymes, there's about a 15 to 20 minute period in which the body begins to pre-digest that food before the stomach starts to work on it. So therefore, if you're eating enzyme-rich foods, they partially digest in your stomach before they move through digestive organs. This takes a lot of stress off of your pancreas and your small intestines and really helps you assimilate your food better. Um, it's also a good reason why when you take certain enzyme supplements, it's good to take them at the beginning of the meal because they will have chance to work before the body starts secreting hydrochloric acid. When the body secretes the hydrochloric acid, it, it's a very, very low pH. It's highly acidic. And pepsin works in a very acidic environment. But that also stops the process of digesting the starches and fats and um, only works on the proteins. The, the purpose of the hydrochloric acid and pepsin is is twofold. One, it causes the cells to swell and burst so that all of the contents are spilled out and turn into a kind of a, 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 a jelly-like mass in the stomach. The other function is it takes the proteins and breaks them down into protein fragments. Once the food moves from there, it goes into the small intestines, and in the first turn of the small intestines, um, pancreatic enzymes are secreted from the pancreas, and there's three um, kinds of pancreatic enzymes. Trypsin finishes the process of breaking proteins down from protein fragments into amino acids. Amylase turns starches to sugars. In, in other words, it continues the process that started with saliva. And lipase converts fats to fatty acids and glycerol, or glycerin. Um, so all three major food categories, fats, proteins, and carbohydrates, are broken down by pancreatic enzymes. There's also a substance secreted in there called bile. Um, bile is a highly alkaline substance, and it helps to change the pH of the acid contents coming from the stomach into an alkaline pH for the digestion to continue in the small intestines. So a good bile flow is necessary to digestion because the enzymes from the pancreas work in an alkaline environment, not an acidic environment. Bile also emulsifies fats to make them water soluble. So in other words, just like if you have put greasy dishes into a pan full of water in your sink, um, without any uh, dish soap, you're not going to dissolve the grease off those dishes because water and grease don't mix. But if you add a little bit of the um, alkaline dish soap, it acts as an emulsifier, makes the fats blend in with the water, and you're able to get the grease off the dishes. Well, it's the same way with bile. Bile is like 
uh, the dish soap of the body. It basically makes those fats so that they can become dissolved in water so that they can be abs absorbed into your body and carried through the bloodstream. Now, your p small intestines themselves actually secrete some additional enzymes in addition to the pancreatic enzymes. Um, pepsidases also help to break down proteins. Um, sucrose, sucrase, maltase, and isomaltase break down certain kinds of sugars into simpler sugars that the body can use. Lactase is an enzyme that breaks down milk sugar um, so that it can be um, assimilated. And there's also more lipase secreted by the small intestines to help break down fats. So these are the enzymes that your body naturally manufactures in order to break down food. So if you have problems with your stomach, problems with your pancreas, problems with the organs, you're not going to get the nutritional value out of the food you're eating, and therefore you're not going to get the nourishment you need from your food. Now, there's this third class of enzymes called food enzymes. And these are natural enzymes that are present in plant and animal foods. And when you get these enzymes from your food, it takes stress off the enzyme producing systems of the body so that your body doesn't have to make as many enzymes on its own. And the problem is, is that these food enzymes are destroyed by heat. Anytime you um, heat a food up, um, it, it will destroy the enzymes. And so when we eat nothing but cooked and highly processed food, we are missing out on these food enzymes that um, are naturally present in the food and it puts extra stress on our digestive organs and wears them out more, more quickly. Now, I'm a big fan when it comes to nutrition of what works in real life. I'm less interested in what the latest scientific theories are and what all of the research is showing and everything as to what actually works with real human beings. That's why I'm a really big fan of um, Weston Price's work with nutrition and physical degeneration and why I'm a really big supporter of the Weston A. Price Foundation which is based on the study of traditional diets. These are the diets that very healthy people living in the wilderness did. And traditional diets incorporated both raw and cooked foods. They utilized both plant and animal foods. They were not low fat diets and they uh, were high in fiber. Some other things about um, traditional diets is they were composed of nutritionally dense, chemical free and naturally grown foods. And these foods were utilized using similar methods of preparing them. Um, and one of the, the similarities in all traditional diets that were studied in uh, Weston Price with, with his work of traveling around the world studying native peoples is all traditional diets incorporated raw enzyme rich foods. Again, all traditional diets incorporated raw enzyme rich foods into the, the diet. So, um, these people, this is a very, very important basic part of nutrition is to get raw enzyme rich foods. Now I mentioned that traditional people did not eat all their food raw. Now there's a lot of people out there who advocate, you know, raw food diets and raw food diets can be very healing for a temporary period of time. But over the long run, when I've looked at a lot of people who are eating this kind of really extreme raw food diet, they don't seem to be healthy over the long haul. As I mentioned, all traditional people actually ate um, both plant and animal foods. They ate um, both raw and cooked foods. Some foods actually do have to be cooked in order to release a lot of their, their nutrients. And, um, and some of these diets where, where people go to extremes are deficient in, in um, protein uh, and, and certain other nutrients because of, of the extreme nature of their diet. But one of the ways that traditional people got enzymes into their diet was by using cultured foods. Now, cultured foods are foods that have been cultured with bacteria or fermented. And these include cultured dairy products like yogurt, cheese, or kefir, cultured soy products like misu, um, and traditional um, like t tamari um, soy sauce kind of thing. Fermented beverages, these are kind of like natural, fer naturally fermented beers, like ginger beer and so forth. 
pickled vegetables such as sauerkraut, um, pickled cucumbers, um, and the Korean food kimchi. In many cultures, they used fermented fish, and a lot of and all bread was traditionally made by a kind of a sourdough process, which um, relied on a fermentive process for um, culturing the flour to make the bread. Now, this is the interesting thing about this. Um, usually, these are what are called lactoferments. In other words, these are, are, are ways of preparing food that take friendly bacteria, uh, like the lactobacillus acidophilus and so forth. And these naturally friendly bacteria, um, when they ferment these foods, they not only um, mean that these foods are rich in these lactobacillus bacteria, which are extremely important for gastrointestinal health, they also make the foods extremely enzyme rich. So these foods, when eaten in traditional diets, served as a way of naturally taking an enzyme supplement with the food that they were eating, which meant that some of the cooked foods they were eating, there was an enzyme supplement taken with them in order to um, get the body to break down the food better and more easily and take stress off of the digestive tract. So I have been really experimenting with this. I mean, I used to think you know, of eating raw food as just eating food that hadn't been cooked. But technically speaking, some of these pickled foods, um, like raw sauerkraut, and of course, if they've pasteurized the sauerkraut you know, because of the whole thing with the fear of germs or whatever, you've missed the whole point of it. Um, but um, if, the yogurt, if you've got yogurt with live bacterial cultures, or you've got um, freshly made kimchi or sauerkraut that still has live ferments in it, um, and these kind of foods, they are very enzyme rich, and they're also rich in friendly microbes, both of which are extremely important to gastrointestinal health and keeping your digestive tract healthy. So you can also um, eat specific foods that are also high in enzymes to help break things down. For instance, extra virgin olive oil contains lipase. Um, raw honey contains starch digesting enzymes. That's assuming it hasn't been pasteurized. Grapes, figs, avocados, dates, again, if these are raw, uh, papaya and pineapple and kiwi, mangoes, a lot of these tropical fruits are particularly high in enzymes that help break down protein, such as papaya and pineapple are, and of course bananas, and then, as I mentioned, the fermented foods. So you don't have to eat completely raw to be healthy. But if you include some raw and especially enzyme-rich foods or fermented foods in your diet, with, uh, with preferably with every meal, you will actually find that your food digests more easily. You'll get more nutritional value out of it. It will take stress off your digestive tract. And there is some evidence that these enzymes actually are absorbed from the digestive tract into the body and actually enhance certain metabolic functions, including immunity, keeping your cardiovascular system in good health, reducing inflammation, promoting tissue repair, and so forth. Now, as I mentioned, heat destroys enzymes. Um, when, some food, when a food has wet heat applied to it, in excess of 118 degrees, this destroys or deactivates or denatures enzymes so they don't work anymore. Now, it takes a dry heat of 150 to destroy enzymes. But here's an interesting fact I learned from Sally Fallon's um, book on um, traditional diets, that the body tolerates food to a temperature of 117 degrees. In other words, when we're drinking something that's hot or eating something that's hot, it doesn't taste too hot as long as it's not over 117 degrees. Once you go over 117 degrees, the food is too hot to eat or too hot to drink. So it's interesting that our body in instinctively knows the temperature at which enzymes begin to be destroyed is also the temperature at which we can't tolerate food and drink. So um, now again, I, I'm not saying that you have to eat everything raw, but a lot of cases, if you um, do things where you're not cooking things at you know high temperature, just barely warming it up, um, you're going to preserve a lot more nutritional value and a lot more enzyme value. Um, 
Native peoples, this gets really disgusting to a lot of people raised in civilization, you know, but when they killed an animal, they ate the liver raw, they ate the glands raw, and most of the meat they did not like roast over high temperature. They smoked it, which is a low temperature preserving process that doesn't completely denature the proteins and destroy things, so there's some living activity left in the food. Part of the reason, though, why um, why we you know, cook things and process things and everything is, is when a food contains live enzymes, over time those enzymes cause that food to break down or deteriorate. That's why fresh food spoils, is because it still has active live enzymes. Foods that won't spoil don't have active live enzymes. Now the reason why grains, nuts, and seeds can be stored for long periods of time without losing nutritive value is because they contain enzyme inhibitors. And these enzyme inhibitors keep the enzymes from prematurely breaking down the nutrients. So in order to deactivate these enzyme inhibitors, seeds have to be soaked or sprouted in order to bring them back so that they have living enzymes that aren't inhibited by enzyme inhibitors. Now, One of the interesting things I learned from Sally Fallon in the book Nourishing Traditions is that all traditional people soaked grains, nuts, and seeds before cooking or eating them. Very interesting fact about traditional diets. Um, in fact, one of the interesting things that on that slide was a picture of the corn. When, um, corn was taken over to Europe and Europeans started eating corn, they brought the crop, but they didn't bring the technology about how to prepare it properly. So they started to get um, beriberi or vitamin, or pellagra I think it was, a, a vitamin B deficiency anyway, from eating the corn because the Native Americans soaked the corn in water that had wood ashes sprinkled into it. In it. There was an alkali, a little bit of a lye substance, which actually um, made the B vitamins and other nutrients in the corn bioavailable, and they did that before they re-dried it and then ground it and um, ate it, um, cooked it and ate it. So because the, the Europeans didn't go through that process of soaking the corn in um, lime water or wood ashes, and water, they didn't get the nutritional value out of the corn. And so if you think about it today, you know, most of the grains and so forth that we eat have not been processed in this matter. I mean, the traditional way of making bread was to take fresh ground flour, you mixed it with a sourdough starter, and you let it ferment overnight. That meant that any enzyme inhibitors left in the flour would be broken down through the soaking process of letting that grain ferment in the sourdough thing. So that any enzyme inhibitors would be gone. We don't do that, therefore we don't get the maximum nutritional value out of the grains, nuts, and seeds that we eat. Um, since I learned this, I've been having per sometimes uh, grits, or cornmeal cereal, or oatmeal cereal in the morning, or sometimes a 10 grain cereal. But what I do is I put the cereal with the water in the pan either the morning before or, or at the very minimum the night before and let the cereal soak in the water um, for at least 12 hours and preferably 24 hours before you cook it and eat it. The thing is, is it makes the cereal cook faster, it's creamier, it tastes better, it's easier to digest because you've gotten rid of all the enzyme inhibitors and you can get the nutritive value out of the grain. Simple little trick involving understanding enzymes and their relationship to our health. Now, one of the other big problems that we have with modern food is that because, remember, it's enzymes that break down nutrients so that food spoils or decays. So what do you think preservatives do? Preservatives are often enzyme inhibitors designed to prevent the enzymes from breaking down the food and causing it to spoil. So many processed foods not only are devoid of enzymes, they actually contain preservatives to inhibit enzymes, and therefore that inhibit the digestion and assimilation of nutrients in our food. It's no wonder we have so many health and digestive problems in our um, culture. So based on the information that we just gave you, who needs enzyme supplements? Well,
First of all, anyone who eats more than 50% of their diet as cooked foods ought to supplement their diet with some kind of enzymes. Anyone who eats fast and processed foods because of all the preservatives they contain ought to be taking extra enzymes. Anyone with weight problems, either overweight or underweight, also needs digestive enzymes because they're not assimilating their food properly. Anybody who suffers from digestive upset or indigestion is having problems with enzymes and needs to take enzyme supplements. Also, since enzymes help with tissue repair and growth, anyone who's recovering from any kind of injury needs to be taking enzymes. And lastly, since enzymes are necessary for the healing process, for immunity, and for a whole host of other things, anyone suffering from any kind of chronic disease needs to be taking enzymes. Now, I would guess that probably that covers about 95% or maybe more of the people who are listening to this program. Um, we, because we don't eat the fermented foods, because we don't eat the raw foods, because we're exposed to the preservatives, we need enzymes. Now, people who know me well and have heard me lecture for a lot know that I'm really not big on the idea that, that everybody needs X, Y, or Z. I'm also not really big on the fact that, that you should take X, Y, Z every day for the rest of your life. But there is one thing and one thing only that I have consistently taken, and I notice when I don't take it, it makes a big difference in how I feel, and that is enzyme supplements. I have been using enzyme supplements now for about 15 years, and they're the one thing that when I stop taking them, I miss them the most, and they're the one thing that I feel is absolutely essential to my health program, especially when I travel, I'm having to eat in restaurants, or whatever, I find enzymes become um, indispensable to maintaining my health. One of the things I've seen is that enzyme therapy can do a lot of things. It can not only enhance digestion, it can promote weight loss or help a person gain weight if they're too skinny. It can relieve allergies. It can help detoxify the body. It's a tremendous cleansing thing. It can help enhance your immune function, decongest your lymphatics. It can also help to um, ease pain, and it can especially help to increase your energy production. So you can see why I'm such a big fan of enzyme therapy. Now, let's look at some of the specific enzymes that we can call on in order to be able to, um, to get some of the benefits of enzyme therapy. The first enzyme we're going to talk about is amylase. Um, amylase are, is starch digesting enzymes. They break starches down into simple sugars. They're important for digestion. I mentioned one of the amylases is produced in your saliva. There's also amylases produced by your pancreas. Taking amylase as a supplement takes stress off of the pancreas and it may help to balance your blood sugar and take away sugar and carbohydrate cravings because you're going to be digesting and metabolizing carbohydrates better. The next one isn't exactly an enzyme, but it's an important cofactor with enzymes for digestion, and that's bentane hydrochloric acid, or bentane HCL. Um, it's, a, it's an important digestive secretion that must work with pepsin, protein digestive enzyme, to break down proteins. Um, it helps protect the body from infection because it kills bacteria that you ingest with your food. It also is essential for absorbing minerals like calcium, zinc, magnesium, uh, manganese, etc. And its production diminishes with age. And on top of that, strangely enough, we have ads on TV all the time, not only for things that counteract acid, um, all our antacid things, but for things that actually block its production in the stomach, which is literally freaking insane to me. Now, I can understand if someone's got like a really serious ulcer and you've got to shut down the acid production and give it a chance to heal, but you could do that a little bit with fasting and doing like some vegetable juices or something like that um, and give it a chance to heal. But Nonetheless, to just shut down acid production because you have a, this occasional acid indigestion 
It's ridiculous. The reason you're getting that <clears throat> is because your food isn't breaking down properly. You're eating too much. You're eating too fast. You're too stressed. You need to deal with those causes. In a lot of cases, that acid indigestion people get isn't just because of too much stomach acid, is because they're not breaking their food down properly and it's fermenting in their stomach. So um, a lot of people benefit by actually taking hydrochloric acid supplements. I haven't found them to be that helpful for me, but um, some, especially sometimes elderly people really need this in order to break down minerals and get protein in order to build their tissue. So it's insane that we like stop that acid. A next enzyme supplement is bromelain, which is a um, pro, uh, protease enzyme that breaks down protein. It takes the stress off the pancreas. It's an anti-inflammatory enzyme, so ingesting bromelain actually reduces inflammation in the body. It also inhibits fibrin synthesis, which um, helps prevent um, clotting um, and uh, inflammation. It aids recovery from injuries, so it helps burns and broken bones and a lot of things to heal. It's also helpful for arthritis, and it goes on with, the, with even more. It helps respiratory congestion and allergies. It boosts the immune system. It's been used to help fight cancer. It reduces the incidence of cardiovascular disease, and it is found in pineapple. It's actually found in pineapple, I think, stem, as well as in the pineapple fruit. So one great way to supplement enzymes is to eat raw pineapple. Um, I find that having um, some raw pineapple with some uh, my eggs for breakfast, actually they digest a whole lot better. Um, also you digest proteins better in the morning because your hydrochloric acid production is higher. But um, just eating pineapple is a great way to get bromelain. However, bromelain is in a lot of supplements because it's such an important enzyme and it has so many functions. For instance, it's in histoblock for allergies, which shows you that enzymes can help reduce allergies. Um, it's for snorries, which is for respiratory congestion um, that's causing snoring. Again, it can break up mucus and so forth. It's an ultimate green zone just for its basic nutritional properties, joint support for arthritis um, and inflammatory conditions, food enzymes to help people digest their food, and everybody's formula, which is a protein supplement, which um, help break down the proteins. So you can see that bromelain is not only in a wide variety of supplements, it has a lot of uses and is a very good enzyme therapy. Cellulase is another enzyme people can take. Cellulase is not produced by human beings. Um, because it, it breaks down cellulose um, and it can be taken therapeutically because it breaks down masses of hair or plant fibers that get stuck in the digestive tract. It can also help to digest very fibrous plants. Now, animals like cows and horses and other animals that live pretty much on grass, grazing, produce cellulase um, to break down and get the nutrients out of that. One of the reasons we can't live on, <coughs> excuse me, live on grass and so forth is because we don't produce cellulase. But sometimes when your system is a little congested from this stuff, taking some cellulase can actually help to detoxify your gastrointestinal tract. There's a closely related enzyme, hemocellulase, which breaks down complex polysaccharides in foods. Um, and these complex polysaccharides are what give you intestinal gas. So if you get a lot of gas from beans and grains and soy products, it's because these polysaccharides, um, your body doesn't break them down. They go into the intestinal tract, and guess what happens? The intestinal bacteria break them down for you and in the process produce a lot of gas. The hemocellulase breaks down the polysaccharides and therefore um, helps you um, so that you don't get that embarrassing gas. And speaking of gas, this next enzyme is really important for another kind of gas problem because lactase breaks down milk sugar. And many people stop producing lactase after infancy. In fact, about 70% of the world's population stops producing lactase after about age two. So what lactase deficiency causes is that milk and other dairy foods ferment uh, and again feed the intestinal bacteria which causes gas and bloating and indigestion. Most Asian people and most um, African Americans do not produce lactase after the age of 
too. Um, and therefore, they tend to have a lot of upset from um, dairy products. Now, if you ferment dairy products, um, that is that you inject them with lactobacillus, bacteria, and other microorganisms, what those microorganisms will do is they will um, pre-digest the milk sugars and you won't get gas therefore from things like cheese and yogurt, um, but you will from like milk and ice cream. Of course you can stop that by taking a lactase supplement which will then break down those milk sugars and help you assimilate the dairy foods. Lipase, our next enzyme, breaks down lipids, or i.e. triglycerides, into fatty acids and glycerin, or glycerol. It's an important enzyme that I find that people who've had their gallbladder removed because of gallstones actually need in order to be healthy to take extra lipase every day. Um, it also decreases fats in the stool. Um, if you ever have a problem where your um, Again, this kind of stuff is like so like strange to be talking about, but somebody's got to do it. Um, if you ever have stools that have kind of a greasy sheen and they bob on top of the toilet like corks and they won't flush down, that's because there's too much fat, undigested fat being passed out in the stool. And so the, that fat causes that stool to float on top of the thing so it won't like, you know, um, uh, flush down very easily. And that's a sign you need to take lipase and possibly you need to take bile salts to improve gallbladder function or some herbs to stimulate bile production uh, in your gallbladder such as um, barberry, um, dandelion, milk thistle, Oregon grape, um, fringe tree is one of my, my favorites. But those are signs you're not breaking down fats very well. Our next enzyme Lysozyme is a carbohydrate digesting enzyme that has antibiotic properties, stimulates the immune system, fights viral infections, um, relieves dry throat, and breaks down mucus. So there's an, an enzyme that you can see that is a, a, a very therapeutic one that can be taken internally. Pancreatin is actually um, pancreatic enzymes derived from animal pancreatic tissue, which is useful to take when people have a pancreatic insufficiency, chronic, weak digestion. And it helps break down fats, proteins, and carbohydrates. The next one, papain, is sort of like bromelain. It's a, a specific protein digesting enzyme that um, in this case comes from papaya. Um, it has antiparasitic activity, which is one of the really good um, benefits of this one. It's a really good one for reducing allergies and um, inflammation. It helps wounds and sores to heal. It can also be very helpful for psoriasis, warts, corns, and skin cancers. It can be applied topically, and it actually helps to eat through warts and things like that. And it can also be helpful for kidney stones and chronic diarrhea. And like I mentioned, this one is found in raw uh, papaya. It's also found in raw papaya, in papaya seeds that are raw. Pepsin is an enzyme that works with hydrochloric acid in an acid environment in the stomach to break proteins down into protein fragments. So um, pepsin is a very important uh, digestive enzyme necessary for the breakdown of proteins. And speaking of proteins, our next one, protease, is a, our plant-based um, protein digesting enzymes. That's called proteolytic. That um, are used to help people who have poor digestion of proteins. But they also fight inflammation, can help to eliminate parasites because parasites have a protein coat that when you break it down, it helps to kill them. And protease can also be used to improve blood flow because it reduces the clumping of red blood cells. And protease can be very helpful for conditions like infections, cancer, and arthritis. One of the ways that you can tell that you're not digesting proteins properly is if you ever get a um, kind of a, a foul, rotten egg taste in your mouth where you bolt, burp up kind of a sulfury smell, that means your protein is not digesting properly. And it means you need either hydrochloric acid and or proteolytic enzymes like bromelain, papain, or protease, or pepsin. Um, 
That takes us to the end of our single enzyme. So what we're going to go to next is we're going to talk a little bit about enzyme supplements. Um, and we're going to, so these are, these are actual blends of different enzymes. Now that we understand what the, in, the individual enzymes do, we can look at some actual enzyme supplements that contain a variety of these and what they'll do. So let's start with um, lactase plus. Lactase plus is an enzyme supplement designed to help break down and digest dairy products. So it contains the lactase for the milk sugar, the protease to break down the protein in milk, the lipase to break down the uh, fat in milk. It contains beetroot, which is a source, natural source of um, bentane hydrochloric acid, and these herbs, caraway, dandelion, fennel, ginger, and gentian, would, all of which help to stimulate um, uh, bile and pancreatic secretions. So if you have problems with digesting dairy products and they give you gas and bloating and that sort of thing, Lactase Plus is a good thing to take if you are eating any kind of dairy foods. Food Enzymes is our next supplement. This is one that contains um, pancreatin, uh, bentane hydrochloric acid, and bile salts. So this one actually contains um, enzymes from animal um, tissue. It contains the pepsin. This one actually makes up for um, a lack of natural digestive secretions in your body. Um, it's microencapsulated so that the pepsin and hydrochloric acid are released in the acidic environment of the stomach, and then when the environment changes alkaline, the pancreatin and so forth is released in the small intestine so it can do its work properly. This is a very good product for people who have really serious digestive problems, uh, especially the elderly people who may not be breaking down their food properly anymore. And it's also a very good supplement um, for certain therapeutic purposes like cancer and so forth when taken between meals. Um, the next su supplement is one that I think is a good general one for people to take all the time. I don't recommend food enzymes for constant use because those are the ones your body's supposed to be making. These are the enzymes that you should be getting in your food if you're eating raw or fermented foods. Um, Protease, amylase, glycoamylase, lipase, cellulase, hemocellulase, invertase, malt, uh, diatase, and so forth. These are enzymes that break down fats, proteins, and carbohydrates, and various kinds of sugars on cellulose in your digestive tract. This is a, just a great all-round enzyme for making up for the lack of enzymes in our food and for the enzyme inhibitors found in our diet. Um, this is a good, good thing to just take regularly with meals, preferably at the beginning of the meal so that these enzymes have a chance to pre-digest the food before the body starts working on itself. High lipase is an enzyme supplement for people who have problems breaking down fats. It contains lipase plus things that stimulate the um, pancreas and gallbladder to help break down fats. It's a very important enzyme supplement I find for people who've had their gallbladder removed. I think that anybody who's had their gallbladder removed should consider taking high lipase with every meal or at least any meal where they eat any fats. And since you're supposed to eat a little bit of fat at every meal, you probably should consider taking um, that with every meal. Protease plus and high potency protease are, are, are just proteolytic enzymes with beetroot, which again is a natural source of bentane hydrochloric acid, and some plant source trace minerals. Um, high potency protease is the same thing, only it's just, it doesn't have the beetroot, it just has a higher level of proteolytic enzymes. If you have problems breaking down protein, um, this is a good enzyme supplement to take, especially if you um, are eating any heavy animal proteins with a meal. This is also a very good thing to take for um, parasites, for enhancing your immune system, um, and for helping with tissue um, repair. The next one, papaya mint tablets. Um, contains papaya fruit, which we mentioned is a source of a protein digesting enzyme, papayan, and peppermint leaf and oil, which stimulate digestive secretions. The advantage of this one is it's chewable and tasty, and it's the one that's perfect to give for kids because they can chew them up and they like them and they taste good too. So you can get some enzyme supplements in your kids that way. Now there's some other things that um, contain enzymes that are really interesting. One of them is bowel detox. This is a, a bowel 
cleansing formula that actually contains some enzymes, some hydrochloric acid and pepsin, pancreatin, bile salts. Um, and they, this helps to detoxify your digestive tract. I have learned um, from a Thomas Easley, a very talented young herbalist and natural healer, about the idea of using enzymes for cleansing. And um, instead of taking stimulant laxatives, if I start to get a little constipated, um, especially happens sometimes when I'm traveling, I'll just start taking like Proactizyme, uh, maybe some Protease, every hour or two with water um, until things get going again. And it's amazing how much enzymes alone can detoxify your gastrointestinal tract. So if you have problems with um, constipation, and particularly if you have problems where you um, uh, are, are kind of used to using stimulant laxatives because without LBS or cascara sagrada or something, you can't seem to go. I would consider doing an enzyme cleanse and taking some very high doses of enzymes to get your colon working properly again. The new product that came, just came out recently is Natozymes, um, uh, which is, contains hawthorn berries, dandelion, capsicum, and an antioxidant from grape skins. Um, and natozymes are enzymes that are absorbed into the bloodstream, and they break down fibrin, which helps to thin the blood and prevent blood clots. So this is a really good one for people who are at risk of heart attack and stroke um, to, uh, or have in, as an alternative to blood thinners to help get the blood so that you're reducing the risk of heart attack and stroke. Same kind of idea of why people take aspirin, but this is using enzymes instead of um, the salicylates to do this. The last enzyme product we're going to talk about is a really powerful, unique, amazing, wonderful product that any of you who have seen the My Big fat Greek wedding where they use Windex for everything. This is what they should have been using instead of Windex. It's a product called Nature's Fresh. And Nature's Fresh is used to break down odors and stains using uh, all six basic types of enzymes. There are six basic kinds of enzymes in terms of how they react biochemically and it contains all six classes of enzymes. But in addition to being used for stains and odors, which was what it was originally put out for, people have found out that you can also use it topically and even in some cases internally to solve a wide variety of health problems. An absolute amazing product. Here's um, the six enzymes, in, six kinds of enzymes in here. I hope I don't embarrass myself trying to pronounce them. Um, but the six kinds of enzymes in Nature's Fresh are hydrolases, isomerylases, ligases, um, lyases, oxoreductases, and transferases. And any of you who want to go study chemistry, those are all particular kinds of enzymes that um, you can use um, to, 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 to catalyze various reactions, such as all of your digestive enzymes are hydrolases because they add water to things and split them apart. I don't understand chemistry enough to explain it all, but that's what's in them. So here are some of the ways you can use this product, okay? I'm talking about health problems, not household cleaning problems. People have used it for acne. Uh, these are spraying it on topically for acne, arthritis, for back pain. It's been sprayed on bites and stings, for jellyfish, mosquito bites, red ant bites. It's been used to solve breast problems like lumps and tenderness, to, to help fix bumps and bruises, um, to help broken bones to heal, to help croup, cysts, and keeping going disc problems, that's like bulging or slip discs, cysts, eyes that have styes in them or swollen, um, fibromyalgia pain, spraying it on where it hurts, heat cramps, infection, menstrual pain, moles, rashes, sore throats, sprains, and continuing stiffness, spasms, teeth problems, pain from braces, gum problems, gingivitis, bleeding gums, toothache, TMJ, wounds, and yeast infections. Now, I got that list of conditions um, some years back on one of the NSP uh, discussion group forums about this product. We asked, people got asked to send in um, 
stories about using Nature's Fresh for healing. And these are, I have stories, testimonials of people in my files of, that have used Nature's Fresh, spraying it on topically for everything I just listed on there, and, and reported that it was highly effective in helping things to heal. Now, this shows you the amazing power of enzymes, how healing enzymes are, what a wide variety of conditions enzymes can help. So in addition to the digestive enzymes and the enzymes you can take internally as supplements, um, you also have these enzymes that you can apply um, uh, topically to help with a wide variety of conditions. Now, of course, uh, just really quickly, you can also take some supplements to enhance your own production of enzymes. Um, mostly, we're here, of course, here we're talking about digestive enzymes. So, for example, all bitter herbs tend to stimulate hydrochloric acid production and pepsin and stimulate um, bile flow and pancreatic enzymes, so they stimulate digestion. Some of the best are gentian, golden seal, orange peel, dandelion, and wormwood. Those are all great herbs for stimulating um, digestive enzymes. Aromatic herbs will also stimulate digestive secretions, including angelica, or dong quai, which is Chinese angelica, peppermint, ginger, cardamom, uh, chamomile, all excellent herbs for promoting digestion. Um, there's a formula called digestive bitters in a liquid form, which if you take a few minutes prior to meal, it contains gentian, cardamom, orange peel, dandelion, and glycerin and flavorings. Helps to stimulate your production of digestive secretions, helps your food break down better. I love one of, um, of my herbalist friend, David Winston, has a formula he calls DOPA, dandelion, orange peel, and angelica, which he uses for <coughs> the same kind of thing, kind of interesting. He doesn't actually call it DOPA, but, <coughs> excuse me, he jokingly calls it DOPA, <laughs> D-O-P-A, dandelion, orange peel, angelica. Um, also, for metabolic enzyme production, you need amino acids, and sometimes people are deficient in those. So super algae and free amino acids sometimes can help enhance the production of metabolic acid uh, taken internally. And some formulas that may also help digestion include the Chinese anti-gas formula, anti-gas with lobelia, spleen activator, and trigger immune. Now let's talk about some enzymes for specific conditions. Um, so we'll wrap this up by, by saying some of the ways that enzymes can be used specific therapeutically and what kinds of enzyme supplements will help. We'll start with cardiovascular disease. Enzymes can help reduce your risk of cardiovascular disease. Natozymes, of course, is one because it's going to help prevent the clots from forming and so forth, but bromelain does the same thing. And um, SOD with gliadin, which is a superoxide dismutase enzyme, will reduce inflammation. And also coenzyme Q10. Now, this is a, a cofactor for an enzyme that will reduce cardiovascular inflammation. So those are some examples of using enzyme therapy um, for cardiovascular disease. Some of those things, by the way, will actually also promote healing from cardiovascular disease. So if you had a heart attack and you want to promote healing the heart, high doses, for example, of coenzyme Q10 have been shown to help rebuild and repair the heart. Cancer is another biggie. Enzymes are absolutely essential to natural therapy for cancer. And food enzymes, protease, bromelain, the SOD again, and coenzyme Q10 have all been used, um, particularly the high potency protease taken between meals can be very helpful for, for cancer because it helps break down the proteins and so forth in the body and has, has proven very beneficial that way. Parasites are another problem where enzymes can be very helpful. Food enzymes, protease, again, particularly high potency protease, bromelain and the papayan in pineapple are all useful because they break down the protein coat around um, parasites and actually help to digest parasites and eliminate them from the gastrointestinal tract. Anybody who has an autoimmune disorder, anyone I've ever seen um, <clears throat> suffering from an autoimmune disorder seems to be deficient in digestive enzymes. So food enzymes, Proactizyme plus protease can all be beneficial for helping people who have autoimmune disorders. 
I alluded earlier to the fact that enzymes can cleanse the colon. <clears throat> so you can do a colon cleanse with enzymes. Um, Paractazine Plus, Protease, Small Intestine Detox are all great products for helping to get rid of kind of think of it as gunk. It digests the gunk in the gastrointestinal tract so that the body is able to clear it out more efficiently. Um, enzyme therapy is useful for asthma, uh, especially proteolytic enzymes um, because mucus is kind of a protein-based substance plus they reduce inflammation. Bromelain, um, uh, trypsin with chymotrypsin, um, protease, and papain have all been used successfully to help treat asthma. Um, back problems, um, spinal discs um, have a lot of enzymes in them, and that's why people found that spraying Nature's Fresh over the places where people had discs problems helped them to heal. Bromelain has also been proven to be helpful for back pain and disc problems, um, but the Nature's Fresh spray on topically can do phenomenally well with that. Um, maybe some of you have been familiar with infants who are having failure to thrive. This is where the infants are not um, gaining weight. A good way to do this is to mix digestive enzymes with the child's food prior to feeding it to the child. I got this idea from reading in the journal of Pretty Meeks, who was an early Mormon um, herbal uh, physician that lived here in the state of Utah. In fact, he lived in um, the town of Harrisburg, which is like just a couple of miles south of where I live. And I bypassed the remains of his house driving to and from work on the freeway every day. But Pretty Meeks talks about this one child who was um, very ill, was kind of wasting away, uh, didn't seem to be able to respond to eating. And so what Pretty Meeks did is he, he chewed the food with his own saliva and fed it to the kid. And the kid started to recover and, um, and began to thrive. So once I had one of my kids was not thriving properly, they weren't gaining enough weight. And I thought, well, I'm not going to chew their food and feed it to them. But I can do a similar kind of thing by just simply t preparing the food and mixing a little of the enzymes, powdered enzymes, out of the capsules in with the food. Um, and I fed it to the kid, and he started gaining weight and overcame failure to thrive. I've since recommended that to a number of parents who have that problem, and they've also had similar success stories with that. Um, enzymes can help injuries to heal, particularly applying the Nature's Fresh topically can do amazing things for enzymes, but taking uh, bromelain or protease enzymes internally can promote more rapid healing of things, broken bones, sprains, bruises, um, you name it, because enzymes catalyze healing reactions in the body. The last one I want to mention is enzymes are probably absolutely essential for anyone who wants to lose weight. Yes, if you want to lose weight, you need to break down your food better. Uh, high lipase, protease, um, Paractazyme and food enzymes could all be used as part of a weight loss program because when you digest your food better, you're more satisfied and you eat less. A lot of times the reason why people are craving the food is because they're not getting the nutritive value out of it. And by adding enzymes, you actually break the food down better. You get better nutrition out of the food that satisfies your appetite. You don't eat as much um, as well as the fact that it helps to break down and eliminate toxins from the system. So in summary, okay, enzymes are the spark plugs of life. This means that without enzymes, no living reactions take place. Um, enzymes are important in metabolism in terms of regulating all the processes of metabolism, including synthesis of hormones and neurotransmitters and the breakdown of hormones and neurotransmitters and so forth. They're also part of the digestive process. And there are enzymes in our food. Now, most of us are not getting the traditional enzyme-rich diets of our ancestors because most of the food we eat is cooked and we don't eat raw fermented foods the way they ate raw fermented foods. Uh, plus, the addition of preservatives means most of us are enzyme deficient. Therefore, most people need to take enzyme supplements in order to break down their food properly, enhance their immune system, and promote healing. This is one of the very, very few things that I think just about 
everybody needs to do. So I encourage you to experiment with the use of enzymes in healing in your life. And I'm very confident that you'll be very pleased with the difference you'll notice in your health, your energy, and your vitality when you use enzymes. Thank you for tuning in and best of health to you.